everyone, welcome to Everyday Champions. My name is Erin Morgan and we are a global family online serving local people in the name of Jesus. Welcome back to Everyday Champions or welcome if you're here for the first time. I'm excited about today. Let me know if you're excited. Head over to our comment section right now and put in if you're excited for today's gathering. Let us know where you're watching from and who you're watching with. We would love to know more about who you're with or where you're from today. It's exciting to know when there are new people as well. So let us know if you are new and we are ready to chat to you over on the comment section. Well, happy August, everybody. How crazy is it that we're already in the month of August? This year has flown by. I'm, I just can't believe we're literally in the eighth month of the year. How crazy is that? Do you think this year's gone quick or slow? I think it's gone super duper fast. Can't believe we're already in August, the last kind of summer month, I guess you could say, which is absolutely crazy. So yeah, just let me know if you think this year's gone quick because I definitely think it has. But we are so excited to be with you all today. Um, and we are excited to listen to a conversation together as well. So if you are here for the first time, if you've never joined Everyday Champions before, we do enjoy a good conversation. So we will be listening to a conversation, but we will also be having our own conversations during the conversation, if that makes any sense. So if you're able to get people around you, if you're in one of our rooms or at home, or if you don't have anybody with you, um, then we are ready to talk to you here online. So get over to the comment section because we will be having interaction question, questions and discussions. So don't forget to get involved with those. But don't forget, get Bibles, notebooks, pens, devices, all the essentials, and let's get ready to go over to the conversation. Welcome to another conversation where we are looking at the dice. This is how we roll. This is how we do things. This is our aspiration as a group of people, as a church, and ultimately their kingdom values. It's the way that we do kingdom. It's practical. It's practical. We love practical application to the stuff that we're talking about. We don't want it just to be theory or head knowledge or even just a conversation. It needs to move to action. And this helps us. It helps me. Not only that, on your head. My word. <laughs> nice and soft. So if you really sit in there at the office, you can lob someone at, at someone's head. Absolutely. It won't hurt. In love. <laughs> <laughs> I've wanted to do that for so long. Oh, a bit of bit of sympathy for me here, people. <laughs> well, listen, this is practical, as Leanne said, and we are building on the recent circle sessions that Leanne did where we looked at Acts 2, 42 to 47, and how the early church uh, lived. And I say lived because it wasn't just going to church. The, in fact, the term going to church makes no sense in the context of what it's not Jesus in the Bible. is. It's not even there. We don't go to church. You don't go to family, do you? Oh, I'm off to family today. You are part of the family. You're going, going to see my family. Um, but it's not a, a name of an organization or an institution. It is a description of a community of believers. And that's what they were in Acts 2. And I love that whole uh, picture that is presented to us there, the blueprint for how we should be as believers and followers of Jesus. And they got it right. They did get it right. And this is about us understanding how can we live out in the 21st century mm -hmm. And it's a very different world in which we live to the early church. But ultimately, principles mm. transcend time. They transcend culture and context. They are relevant. But what we're trying to do and what we've done with the dice and through the books, Winning Conversation and Winning Keys, is to help mm. us understand how we live out that kingdom culture, how we have the attitude, the behavior, the characteristics of what it means to live in the kingdom. Mm. Jesus says you're in the world, but not of it. So what does that actually look like? So today we're going to build on last week, where we looked last week at Be Stirred, Not Shaken. And this week? We're building again. Whoa. <laughs> we're building a platform, not a soapbox. Number three on the dice there is. 
And it's a very, very useful week for us because I think it's something that we probably unintentionally are doing every day. We're either building a platform or a soapbox, but we're perhaps unaware of, of which one we're building. So it's really important for us to evaluate and see what this actually means. And, and this is really practical because this is something that we need to practice with one another as mm-hmm. believers. But the truth is what we do together as believers then spills out into our daily lives. Mm-hmm. And if you keep practicing the kingdom values in your workplace, you'll see that things start to happen. Mm-hmm. You'll see that doors will begin to open. Yeah. You'll see that opportunities will arise. At times there is opposition because when light collides with darkness, there's challenge, but ultimately there is breakthrough. And so this really is connected to our deepest desires and goals and dreams and to the potential that God's put inside of us. Mm. And, you know, at Everyday Champions coming up, we're going to be talking more and more about how we are going to have opportunity to practice this. So really engage with our session today and our time together and our conversation with one another, because regardless of how old you are, how gifted you think you are or feel that you are, we are going to be talking about one particular word, one particular action that we can all practice. What is that word? And it's something that I wasn't very good about with you just before the recording of this session Uh. the word is encouragement or encouraging because that's what building a platform looks like it looks like true encouragement of others and I wasn't very encouraging just before because what were you doing I was I was preparing my my dad jokes and Leanne said to me she said no. <laughs> I said No, not enough is enough. Let's give the people a break, she said. I actually said one thing worse than that. I said they're not funny. Which actually is not very nice, but it's also very true. Now, come on, people, let's have a little bit of of response from you. <clears throat> because ultimately the it's we're in a democracy. So the it, the people Supposedly. the people need to speak. Okay, so right now, and we're, obviously we're doing this ahead of time, so we'll have to wait for the results, but I believe in you. and So do I. <laughs> so who thinks there needs to be an end to the dad jokes? Okay, so if there's to be an end to the dad jokes, just give us a wave, give us a shout, put yes in the chat column on YouTube, and I will call it a day. I will retire from dad jokes i will lay down that mantle don't milk it (laughs) or if you have seen the light and you are enlightened (laughs) then then encourage me because right now i'm starving for encouragement give me a break (laughs) keep it going gareth keep it going keep them coming come and let me know right now give me a wave Give me a cheer if you want them to keep going <laughs> and make it really oh, loud if you want. Oh God, I, I can hear, hear anything. I can hear it in my spirit. <laughs> I, I can hear it. Thank you, people. The people have spoken. I believe Thank that you in faith. to all two of you. If right but... now it's quiet <laughs> and everyone said no, then I'm going to look rather oh, ridiculous. I feel bad that I didn't encourage you. Your, your jokes are okay. Well, don't worry. I, I'm, I'm forgiving. And after this, after we've recorded, I will take you for a meal because there's a nice new restaurant opened down the street called Karma. There is no menu. You just get what you deserve. I'm going to gag you. Get what you deserve. Restaurant (laughs) called Karma. We get it. We get it. Yes, people. Hang on. That's cheating because you didn't wait for the result. Of whether uh, you should carry on or not. Uh, honestly, I've, so I've sensed it. We retract it's faith. That joke. I'm acting in faith. <laughs> so we want to ask you a question to kick off, and it's not whether Gareth should carry on. <laughs> no, we've settled that. Joke, yeah, mm, we'll see. Um, the first question that we want you to ask in your groups, or again, if you're by yourself watching this, you can put it in the chat, is what would you consider encouragement to be? And would you say that you are an encouraging person? <laughs> I'm very encouraging, just not of your jokes. Um, but in, in all seriousness, would you, what do you consider encouragement to be? Because I think it's something that we we use as a word, but perhaps we don't fully understand what it is. So discuss that four minutes and then we'll come back.
Okay, so hopefully you had a good time discussing what you think encouragement actually is. Because like I said, it's a word that perhaps we use, particularly in kind of church circles, but it might be not something that we've really thought it mean what about what it actually means it's true definition yeah and i think encouragement is something that comes from a selfless heart Mm. when it's when it's sincere encouragement and that's an important word sincere because people can be encouragement but it can be really yeah insincere yeah it can be cloaked (laughs) uh, fake yeah absolutely and there's nothing worse than that you can almost sense sense that when there's strings attached to uh, encouragement or to something nice it's quite unattractive isn't it and not very nice when someone has given you a compliment encouraged you but it's not from a sincere place and you think "Mm, absolutely no totally so the the distinction again this is all about distinctions because it's about helping you to become distinctive, to be light in a dark world, to mm. be salt in an unsavory world. And of course, as we, the church, come together, this, this, uh, the light, the, the saltiness, as it were, should be strengthened so that we can go and be effective on mission. And of course, at the heart of the challenge is the fact that as, as human beings, we're naturally selfish. Yeah. We're naturally more concerned with how I am seen, how I feel, what's what's in it for me. And of course, every one of us naturally suffers from that. But the kingdom is not about being self-served, but it's about uh, selfless serving. Mm-hmm. It's about how can I help others? How can I build others up? And that really is a distinction that sets you apart. It makes you, and I hear this in the right way, it makes you a very attractive person to be around when you are an encourager. It does, and it's true because I think particularly, you know, you can look. You don't have to look very far in today's society to see that um, human nature, the world, is building a soapbox. It's all about, listen to me, I've got something to say, look after me, look after number one, I want what I want, you know, all of that kind of thing. And although it might not be that obvious, it is definitely the narrative and the undertone of everything that is, that is in the human nature. Um, but like you said, the flip side of that, the kingdom is is the complete opposite yeah. of that. The kingdom of God is all about how can I serve somebody else? How can I elevate? How can I lift someone higher than myself? How can I give someone the best and me be willing to take the mm. second best? That's really hard. Everyone is vying for first place. Everyone is vying to be top dog. And we talked about this a few weeks ago in, in one of the sessions, I can't remember which, but it's all about what is real servant heartedness? What is it to be a real servant? And that is what the, the kingdom of God is about. And actually that comes down to encouraging because when it's sincere, you don't care how you look. You don't care how ridiculous a position it might put you in. And also it's not about where is this going to get me? Mm. It is genuine. I just want to tell you X, Y, Z. Yeah, and, you know, encouragement was the lifeblood of the early Mm. church. And we recognize that if we're not careful in the church, especially in the Western world, Mm. where we don't, let's face it, whilst, you know, there are times when it's difficult to have our, our faith and maybe to feel like we can speak, the truth is it is still pretty comfortable. And that is dangerous because it means that what tends to breed in the church, because as human beings without challenge, we go back to our default setting, Mm. which is it becomes about me. It becomes about what I get out of this. And when we treat church, which is how I engage with you and you engage with me about, well, what are you going to do for me? Mm. You know, what is the church going to do for me? Then what we end up with is is with with a, a world version of the church, which is no different it just becomes about consuming. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that has hamstrung the church. It has made the church ineffective, yeah. no different from any other organization or institution in that sense. And yet it's the very thing that should be setting us apart. And the early church, one of the things that helped the early church understand how important encouragement was was persecution. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, we're not praying for persecution. We're not asking for it. But the letter that we're going to go to that Paul wrote, the Apostle Paul, was to a church in Thessalonica. And the church at the time of him writing was experiencing hardship and persecution 
for their faith. So we're going to go to that letter and we're going to draw out the principles about encouragement and what can we learn from Paul as to how we become encouragers, how important it is, maybe learn a little bit more about encouragement, maybe things related to encouragement we never thought were encouraging. Mm. And and we want to imbibe this really important characteristic, which ultimately is in the heart of God. Because encouragement means quite literally to be in courage. It means that I deposit courage in you. When I say that statement, make that comment, the result is that you have more courage to go and be and do what God has called you to do. So shall we yeah. read this? From uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, I believe yes, it, is. it is, and verse 12. It says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. I love that word, admonish. Mm. It's a good word, isn't it? We'll have a look at what that means in a moment. Hold them in high regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and everyone else. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus do not quench the spirit do not treat prophecies with contempt but test them all hold on to what is good reject every kind of evil may God himself the God of peace sanctify you through and through may your whole spirit soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it do you want me to read the final verses of that? Go on, shall let's I, finish it. Let's finish it off. Let's do it. We might as well. It's only let's a couple finish more left. It off. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amazing. Now, again, let's remind ourselves here. They're being persecuted. This is a challenging time in which to be a follower of of Jesus mm. Christ. And yet what Paul here is saying is saying that you know ultimately you have to encourage one another and mm. build each other up. Verse 11 says encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Mm-hmm. So they were getting it right. They were they were already doing what he said they should be doing it was just to go that one step further go a little bit further in with this like you're doing it but now do this so again we've talked about this on in other areas but it's like a dial it's like Mm. okay well i can be a a six out of ten encourager but there's a seven (laughs) that i can go to and what does that look like because it's a strength it's something it's a muscle that we can develop that makes us more effective Mm. as as individuals but as a collective, as a group. And so we want to look at what is Paul saying here? How do we go from whatever level we're at right now of being an encourager? Okay, whether it's a three, a five, or a six, or a seven, how do we go to the next level? And why should we go to the next level of encouragement? Now, again, what Paul here is is identifying is that when you come together, you need to keep this front and center mm. of encouragement. And let me just read another verse from another passage, again, just to remind us that this is not just isolated to this particular passage, but Hebrews 10 says from verse 24, let us consider how we may spur mm. one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. It's interesting because I was looking at this recently and I actually sent something out on on um, email to those who have signed up, subscribed, and looked at this whole thing of where it talks about spurring one another on, encouraging one another. We tend to think of it as like, oh, well done, keep going, and then that's it. That's lovely, but that word or those words to spur one another on literally means to provoke as if to stab or jab somebody. So that's what it meant in the original language. It's not just a pat on the back like, yeah, go for it. It's actually provoking 
like jabbing or stabbing somebody to do something. So when we're encouraging, it isn't just a pat on the back, but it's a challenge mm. to keep going or it's a it's provoking someone to do in to, towards love and good deeds. It's making them feel provoked in their thoughts and in their hearts like, oh, yeah, I can be more, I can do more, or what do I need to change? And I think that is the attitude there of what encouragement, building that platform is is that, having a relationship with somebody that is built through encouragement where you have that opportunity and also for them to do it to me is to provoke Mm. me and for me to provoke them towards love and good deeds that's a great great point because paul here is really clarifying what encouragement is and based upon what you've just said it isn't just that nicey nicey set of words that gives us goose pimples it is challenge Mm. He says in verse 13, hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. In other words, how you encourage somebody is based upon how you truly see them Mm. and, and, and if you truly love them or not. And the reason why that's important is because he goes on in verse 14 to talk about urging brothers and sisters and warning those who are idle and Mm. disruptive, encouraging the disheartened and helping the weak being patient with everyone. So Paul here is saying that encouragement is challenge. Mm. Encouragement is actually confrontation at times. It is not allowing people just to do what they want. It's challenging people to do what they need to do and to be who they need to be. And I think it's when we have not captured the essence of that encouragement that we actually have a... A, a church that is 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 weak mm. and it isn't strong because yeah we come together and what we have in common is the fact that we're all Christians we may sing songs or we may we may pray corporately together and all of those things are are good and great but really the strengthening think about lifting weights lifting weights it's not the first few lifts of the weight that create the muscle it's the moment where like oh I really don't want to do this I really don't want to do this but I need to do it you lift the weight. And that's when the muscle is built. And it's Mm. the same in the church. It's having the conversations that are done in love and to build courage. But actually, it'd be a lot easier not to have those conversations. I was just, uh, as you were talking, I just had an image in my mind. I don't think it was necessarily God-given. It might be. Uh, But just the whole thing, when we talk about admonishing, because, again, that's, that's a great word. It's not negative or positive it's just fact of encouragement but it it can be straight talking Mm. had this image of you know when you go to play bowling and i this is me usually the ball heads straight for the the gutter you know but then you have those bumpers that you pull down either side to prevent that from happening and essentially that's what i believe we should be like in the church where we act as the bumpers for for those around us that's what admonishing that's what kind of spurring one another on looks like it's like to stop prevent people from falling into the gutter to say hey no you need to go this way you need to go this way and allowing them but sometimes pride doesn't let let us have that in place and we lift those bumpers up and we make mistakes but I think when we allow those bumpers to come down it's not cheating as it is in bowling actually it's the picture of how the church should have been and how it was in uh, as Paul's talking there and so I think a great interaction question here is for us to if we're going to go from level three or five encouragement to the next level, what, what's currently getting in the way mm. of us encouraging others? What's stopping us if encouragement is not just saying nice things? Mm. I mean, that's a starting point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for some of us, it may be, do you know what? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm nice. a miserable so-and-so <laughs> and I just need to, uh, you know, I just need to change the look of my face because it looks like I've been slapped backwards, uh, you know, and I just need to, I put a smile on my face. Now, listen, like, and smile to other people now that's step one so if that's your step great but but right now if encouragement is this having a genuine love willing to challenge Mm. willing to encourage when people get it right but also to challenge when they get it wrong because you love them yeah okay then what is currently standing in your way so for you it's different for everyone but what is getting in the way right now Mm. of you encouraging others
Okay, so hopefully you've had a great four minutes looking at what prevents you from encouraging others. And that's not kind of us accusing people. That is something that we need to all look at ourselves. What what stops me from encouraging others? You know, it could be something like pride, you know, like, oh, I'm not doing that. How will I look if I go and give them a compliment or give them a word that God's told me to, to give them? Or maybe you're just embarrassed, like, oh, I could never do that you know and maybe that tips into kind of inferiority complex who am I to tell this person who's bigger or better than me you know an encouragement um maybe it's just like oh well somebody else can do it Mm. you know why should I they're better at that than I you know all those kinds of things and there's there's so many different answers that we could have given to to why we should be doing it um even down to the point of well what about me Who's going to encourage yeah. me? If I give an encouragement, who's going to who's going to encourage me? Like for some reason, we couldn't get that from somewhere else if we gave it away. It's it's funny how the human nature works. So I don't know what things you've you've kind of discussed, and maybe you've put some in the chat. But I'm sure we've all come up with reasons as to why we don't encourage others. I think mine is busyness. I think it's you know my head gets too full of things that feel like they're more important mm. and in that moment you can see past people yeah, yeah, yeah. and so you it's not like a deliberate attempt to avoid but actually it's a wrong priorities mm. and again you know it, 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 that's where it can be subtle it's not necessarily that you're just a bad person yeah. you know it's just sometimes you lose track you lose sight of what is truly important and Paul here reminds us to strive to do what is good mm. for each other and for everyone else, which shows that it's not natural. It's not, it doesn't just you know happen when we wake up in the morning. Mm. Oh, I'm just going to encourage everybody that I come and meet with today Although and challenge. Although you do get natural people who have the gift of encouragement, which is true. There are some people who really, I know people that I have in my life who are so, they ooze encouragement and it's genuine and I thank God for them. And I could name them now, but I won't because I'll embarrass them. But they are in, true encouragers. But I think for, for even them, there's always another level to go to and we all have to go to work on this we have to uh, be, get better and be better you're, you're 100% right and I think Paul gives us the keys I think he gives us the keys in verses 16 17 and 18 and I think in reference I you know I know exactly what you mean when you get those people who are naturally encouragers you know Barnabas was an encourager mm, wasn't he? he was called yes. an encouragement yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, but I think even those who have a gift of it, they they are practicing. You know, when you have a gift, you practice it. Mm. And, and when something is practiced, it looks easy. Yeah. And so actually, I think the, the, the pr- things that we can practice are in verse 16, 17, and 18. Because let's face it, when we come together as church, when and that's just where two or three gather together, whether that's in a coffee shop, whether that's in a church building, whether that is online on a Zoom call, it, we, we kind of, if we don't come prepared, we will bring the state 
that we've been carrying that day. And yeah. let's face it, we can all be in a bit of a state. We're all in a state. <laughs> we're, all, we're all in a bit of a state uh, because, you know, things have challenged us, disappointed mm. us, hurt us. And if we don't deal with that, then we bring that into a place or a space. And, and, and really, we're not going to build out of that state. We are going to subtract from that state. We are going to perhaps maybe even build a bit of a soapbox. In other yeah. words, well, I just need somebody to encourage me. Yeah. I just need somebody to, to, to be nice to me mm. or to say the things I want to hear today. But here's what Paul says. Paul says this. And listen to the absolute nature of what he says. Rejoice mm. always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, I'd like for us all to say that together. Yeah. Okay. In, in one voice. Okay. Are you ready? Let's go. Rejoice Rejoice always. always. Pray, pray continually. continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The reason why I think he's giving us keys there is because when you rejoice, and it's a choice, I'm going to rejoice right now, even though this has just happened to me. When I choose to pray continually, in other words, give it over to God and say, God, I need you to to Mm. intervene. And, and almost put it at his feet rather than trying to solve it all yourself. When you give thanks in all circumstances, then what's happening is you are cultivating joy, you're cultivating peace, you're cultivating love, you're, you're cultivating hope. Mm. And, and when you do these things, you enter into a kingdom state. Yep. The kingdom of God is is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy yeah. Spirit. And it's only when you deal with that on the inside that then you can start to affect the outside. I think that's the, the picture of what can very easily happen, particularly, you know, the church is not exempt from this, but everyone can be starving of encouragement. We've lost how to encourage ourselves even because that's an important factor. Actually, we need to learn how to encourage ourselves. And we then start, all of us are just walking around starving. Mm. And instead of the answer of actually pouring that out to each other, regardless of what's happening to us, we just tend to cling on more to the very oh, yeah. small reserve that we've got. And that, I believe, is exactly as the enemy, Satan, would have us be. He cannot touch us. He cannot harm us. But if he can prevent us from moving forward, from building that platform, then that he's done his job yeah and like we were saying whatever we practice in our church family with one another it spills out into our world into our workplaces our families our schools um in the cafes in the streets wherever you might be and we're not going to practice that it needs to almost become a natural thing Mm. it needs to be something that we do naturally that we actually then don't have to strive it's just it happens like you said for encouragers who are naturally good at this they it's because they're doing it all the time that it it makes it look easy but we have to practice we have to put it into practice it needs to be something that we daily uh, work through and and work towards and maybe this is a good point for us to to go to our third question because it is literally how can I put this into practice because it might be well I just need to encourage but there's so much more than that we Mm. actually have to plan for it you have to actually schedule it in you actually have to think God today when I go into this environment give me something to say specific to so and so or so and so and God will give you something it might be something really small but to that person it would be Mm. really big very good well listen let's go to that question and think about a specific context as leanne said it may be when you come together with other believers Mm. or it could be when you go into the workplace remember you've got to be who you are wherever you are you practice it every day it could be with your your spouse it could be with your children or Mm. family members or uh, somebody who is in your family but you're not close to i you know Listen, you think about the context, but then make a very specific goal that you can act upon and continue to act upon until it becomes a new habit. Okay, discuss this and then we'll come back.
Okay, so hopefully we've worked through how we're going to be better encouragers, how we're going to put this into practice. We're, we're working on active goals here, new habits that we're, you know, kind of incorporating into our life. And let me just say this, a big challenge for me would be to go and encourage somebody who has hurt me, encourage somebody who is distant from me, encourage somebody who is higher up than me because I think that actually they don't need it. Those are kinds of the good encouragement uh, practices, if you like, that we really need to push into because they will push us further, they'll stretch us further, they'll grow us, they'll help us to walk in this expansiveness that God has got for us because that will help us build a platform in the kingdom sense, not a soapbox. And we haven't got time to go into, there's so much more we could go mm. into in this passage in 1 Thessalonians 5. But note it says here, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. This process of constantly encouraging, maintaining the right state of our heart, our soul, is the sanctifying process of becoming more like Christ. That's what sanctification means it's the process of becoming more and more like christ made in his image revealing more of christ to the world mm. so that's how important this yeah. in is this isn't a nice to have this is a need to have if we are true disciples of jesus christ and so let me just give you just some further practical ways in which because I, I don't want anybody to leave today's conversation not having clear ideas of practically mm. how you can build that platform by being an encourager in the fullest sense of the word as we've explored today. In my book, The Winning Conversation, I talk about one thing that we can do that encourages everybody. That is, it, it's going to sound so simple and easy that you're going to think, well, does that really make a difference? And it's listening. Mm -hmm. Actually listening to people is a form of encouragement. Now, again, I'm going to encourage you to listen, but also to respond. And what I talk about, I use the, uh, the word listen as an acrostic and to almost give us ideas as to ways in which we can encourage. Because sometimes I don't think it's necessary because we don't want to. It's because we don't know how to. Mm. So, again, it's a training thing. It's something we've got to practice. And, and so I, I talk about, and again, I'll, I'll go through this quickly. You can go and look at the book yourself if you want to spend more time in this. But L is saying to someone, okay, when you've, when you've listened to them and you've observed them, what, what I love about you is, and give examples of, mm. of what is it you love about them. Well, I, 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 what I love about you is that you never give up. What I love about you is you put others first. What I love about you is that you bring the best out of me or you inspire me. What I love about you is you're consistent when others are not. How long does it take to say that statement? Mm -hmm. And yet, let me tell you now, 
they will remember that, those few words, out of the thousands of words, potentially, Very true, that they yeah. hear that day. So what I love about you is, the I is, I can imagine you. So this is about, again, inspiring hope in people. You know, as you observe somebody, think about, what could this person do? I can imagine you turning this story that you've just told me into a book one day. Mm -hmm. Or I can imagine you you taking this this idea that you've got and, and making a business or writing a song or this could, is this, a, is this a new career for you? Again, you don't have to tell them this is what the Lord is saying, <laughs> but just, just drop a thought. At the yeah. very least, they're going to be encouraged to think, oh, that person really believes in me. I mean, I don't want to be a teacher, but, <laughs> but, that, but, but they're encouraging me. Yeah. The S of listen is I can see. What's the uh, old uh, quiz that you say? Say what you see. <laughs> Catchphrase? Catchphrase. <laughs> say what you see. Say what you see. That's my Irish... Uh, it's my terrible. Irish. Say what you see, it's sir. As, it's as good as your jokes. That's an encouragement for you. There you go. Say what you see. Your strengths anyway, are not yeah, your Irish wanna, wanna, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not encouraging my Irish uh, folk right now. So I can see your strengths are, oh, you know, you really empathise with those in, in need. You can really motivate those who mm. are feeling down. You can really break down a complicated task and make it simple. That's my wife. She's very good at that. She takes down everything that I make complicated and makes it simple. Because <laughs> I am simple. No, no, no. So, <laughs> The T, tell me about your challenges. Again, notice this, these are questions. Mm. We can, you don't have to give them the greatest instructions of their life. They're just questions. You're, you're valuing through listening. Tell me what's been happening at work. Mm. Tell me what, what's your goal. Tell me what you're trying to learn right now or what new skill you've developed. Again, these are all ways we can listen. E, encourage. You encourage me. How does somebody encourage me? You encourage me when you don't allow your challenges to change your attitude mm. or, or when what you do day in, day out, you, you still smile. You don't allow it just to become you know, something that you become fed up with. Mm. Again, encourage. And then the final one is of N, listen, never underestimate what. Now, again, this is about don't just assume that people know their strengths That's right so never underestimate what this means when you say that to me mm. when you do this you influence me through what you do you you encourage me when you now the great thing is in everyday champions there's a lots of people out there that do this to us Absolutely. don't they so yeah. you know we, we we are so appreciative we are beneficiaries of, of people's encouragement absolutely let's encourage yeah others to go further exactly. and there's some very practical ways that we can do that but hopefully you've caught mm. the spirit of paul's letter here and how again i say it again because we're coming into a season where where we're going to create opportunities and, and a necessity for us to do this even more than we ever have done before so we can use this summer mm. period to get practicing and i think that's a really handy tool for those of us who are perhaps thinking well, i don't even know where to start that's that that kind of acronym there is really helpful for us obviously don't go and tell someone <laughs> that it's not it's not true like i love it when you are truthful but they tell lies all the time or you know we haven't got to manipulate or force this it has to be genuine i think that's sincere. the whole thing it's sincere and genuine and you know going back to the early church they had glad and sincere hearts they wanted to be together they wanted to grow together and learn together and it's that sincerity uh, and being genuine is so so important but you know as you do it i truly believe that when we work in partnership with god his holy spirit tells us things that we just become the messengers so many people have encouraged me it's happened recently I won't go into it but a group of people encouraged me they had no idea that day how much I needed to hear those things or what I'd been saying the, the night the morning before it was they couldn't have known mm. it was a God moment and it's those things that we are looking for in the church that build a platform with one another so we can build a platform with those in our world and see the kingdom of God ex increased and see it increased in our lives as well let's be a voice of hope this week in the lives of those that we meet come on let's build a platform not a soapbox okay let's create mm. that internal conversation where we rejoice uh, always we pray continuously we give thanks in 
every circumstance. Mm. Let's make sure we do that before we go out of the door in the yeah, morning, yeah, yeah. before we go into our day, so that we are ready to take every opportunity to encourage. So let's pray. Mm. Would you like to pray? Yes, let's pray. thank you. Lord God, we just thank you so much that you encourage us. You God, we thank you that your word encourages us. When we, when we read the things that you've said towards us, how much you love us, what you've done for us. God, we are so encouraged. But God, I want to thank you that you have um, encouraged us to go and be encouragers, that actually this is the design for your church, that we encourage one another, that we build that platform so that we can see your kingdom extended, your kingdom grown, and not us building a soapbox looking after ourselves. So God, will you challenge? us. I pray that even this week we will take on that challenge ourselves to, to say, how can I take this further? How can I do this more? How can I be a greater encourager? God, help us to not just be people who pat each other on the back, but in the next breath, pull people down, but mm. be genuine and honest. Help us to be people who um, admonish one another, that call out stuff when we see it isn't right, when we truly disciple one another, because it's our, our heart yes. and our aim that we are an authentic, genuine church of Jesus Christ, that when people look at us, they want to be part of our family, not because we're no different to anyone else, but because we are different, mm. because we stand out, because we have got the, the kingdom of God stamped on us, we pray. God, we thank you because you've called us to do this. You've called us to be these people. Help us to walk in it, I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Listen, remember today and every day you're a champion and there's more in you than you think. Well, thank you so much for an amazing message, such a good conversation um, and great discussions out of that as well. And now we're going to go into our communion time together, an important time um, and something that we all should, you know, get ready to go into knowing that we're getting into the presence of God. We're going to thank Jesus for what he has done for us. This is a moment of remembrance and celebration as well. Um, so let's put all distractions aside and focus on what we're going to be looking at in just the next few moments, which is thanking Jesus for his death and resurrection. I've got a, a couple of verses for you today that I just want to share. Um, and I feel like these are going to be able to encourage you because when I've read them before, they have definitely encouraged me. And it's in Romans, an amazing book of the Bible, by the way, that's got so many amazing verses that really just help you understand more about Jesus' death and resurrection. So head over to Romans if you want to read a little bit more. But this is Romans 3 verses 23 to 24 and it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Wow, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us by our sinful nature, we are sinners. But I love that Jesus came to bring his grace and to justify us so that we could be free. I love that. I love just knowing that Jesus has chosen to not remember and dwell on the things that we have done wrong because he has come to forgive us. I love that even though we have done things in the past that are are sinful and bring hurt and pain a lot of the time and cause us to move away from God. Because of Jesus, we have been redeemed and set free. I always think of the fact that, you know, before Jesus came, there was man and there was God and we were separated from God. We were enemies of God. 
But Jesus, when he came, he came to bridge the gap. He came and fell into the middle. And because of his death and resurrection, because he died for us and forgave us of our sins, he bridged the gap between man and God. And because of Jesus, we have been redeemed. Our relationship with God has uh, been brought back together. We are able to go into a relationship with God, have full access to God. And I love that because that is how God intended man to live, to live in relationship with God. So Jesus has brought us back to um, exactly how God created uh, mankind to be, which is to be with God all of the time and walk with him and learn with him and journey through life with him. And it's because of Jesus that we can do that today. And that means we also don't have to worry about the past and we don't have to worry about the future because if Jesus has come to set us free, to justify us, to redeem us, that means that we no longer have to worry about anything. I don't know about you, but sometimes I can worry. I find myself worrying about either things from the past or worrying about the future. But you know what makes me feel so free in a moment of worry is knowing that Jesus, when he came, when he came to this earth, when he came to die for us, he has taken all of those things into our hand, into his hands, out of our hands and into his hands. And he is, um, he has chosen to be in control and to um, set us free from the weight that comes with worry. And so when you feel like you're worrying, when you feel like you just can't go on or you feel stuck and you're in fear, just remember that when Jesus came and he came to die for us, even though we were sinners, even though we fell short of the glory of God, he came and redeemed us and he took all the things that have weighed us down and put them in his own hands and he died for us and he died with those things so we don't have to worry about them anymore. And so I hope that encourages you today if you're feeling worried or if you're just needing to know and be reminded of Jesus' amazing love for us, the fact that he came and he died the most horrible death, but he did it for you and for me, then let this be your encouragement today. And as we just pray together, maybe there's a few things in your heart that you just wanna thank God for personally. I know that there's so many um, hard things that go on in the world, but there's also so many amazing things that Jesus is doing and has done and will do in the future. So let's take this moment together to just thank Jesus for what he has done and for who he is as well. And we're also gonna, Thank Jesus for the tithes and offerings at the end um, because we know that that's such an important part of being the church. So let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for all of us here. We thank you for the fact that you came and you died for us. We thank you that you looked beyond the things that we'd done wrong, but you saw our hearts. You knew we needed saving and so you came and you, you, you died for us and you gave your life for us. And we thank you that because of you, Jesus, we get to find our life in you and our identity is found in you only, Jesus. We thank you that you have forgiven us of our sins. We thank you that when you were on that cross, Lord Jesus, you, you paid the, the debt that we cannot pay and we could never pay, Jesus. We thank you that you have gone before us and you take everything into your hands. We don't have to worry about anything because we know that you have uh, the future, um, you know the future, you, we know that you have taken the past and died for the past, Lord Jesus. We thank you that in you there is so, so much freedom and with you, Lord, we have a relationship with our Father in heaven, in heaven again. So we thank you again, God, for sending your son Jesus to die for us and through him we get to find life and it is incredible, Lord. And we thank you also for the tithes and the offerings that have come in today. We thank you, Jesus, that you take every single penny that has been given and you use it to build your church. And we just pray that you'll help us to be obedient to your calling of, uh, of giving um, back to you because we know that everything belongs to you anyway. But Lord, we just want to be obedient to you and to your word, Lord. And we thank you for all the things that you do and bless us with because we know that it all belongs to you anyway. But we want to give back to you, Jesus. In your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today at Everyday Champions. We thank you again for, uh, for the conversation. Thank you for joining us in the discussion questions online. It's been amazing getting to hear everybody's thoughts and to just see you all again, our church family. I love our church family, but don't forget to stay connected and we'll be here again 
next week as well. And don't forget that today and every day you are our champion and there is more in you than you think.